now on Patreon. Since the spring, I've had the pleasure of shooting the Mamiya 645. I'm sure all of you already know my affinity for this camera, but I want to tell you why in a super long, drawn out way. Starting with some shots that I took around the town of Holyoke at twilight. These were all shot on Kodak Ektar, which I love, but I gotta say I was blown away by the colors that I got here. You gotta be careful around here, man. Everywhere you, you turn, there's needles. So in this video, I wanna go over why I love this camera, the lenses I have for it, what I shoot with it, and why I think this camera gives me the ability to create my best work. Even the fuzz in Holyoke appreciate the 645. But in all seriousness, I've been trying to get that picture of the hair hunter into a video for almost four months now, and I finally did it. Okay, video over. That was fun. I'll see you guys on the next one. Just kidding, let's get into it. The Mamiya 645, or if you're into the whole brevity thing, the M645, is a medium format 6x45 SLR. This version is the J, the J stands for junior, I went over this in a previous video, but this is essentially a stripped down version of the original 645, minus the mirror lockup and second shutter release, which the 1000S has, but the 1000S also has a maximum shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second, which uh, will help separate these three mechanical cameras. But first, I want to talk about what I use this camera for. Over the years, I've better understood what I want to accomplish with my image making, and one of my favorite tools to use is my Mamiya 645. My favorite thing to shoot with this camera are impromptu portraits, much like this image I took recently on a defunct steel bridge with a man named Jack. I met him on a super crisp fall morning, and uh, I don't think he even knew I was on the bridge with him, even though it's a pretty small bridge. But I really love this image because uh, you get a lot of detail in the photo. Things like the patch on his jeans and the colors in the foliage and that wide field of view that the 55 millimeter offers. I love shooting wide because it sort of lets the viewer in on the entire scene rather than just focusing mainly on the subject. Sidebar. If you want me to create a video about how I approach impromptu portrait photography of strangers, let me know in the comments section below. Another thing that I use this camera for is documentary work, which obviously is well documented on this channel. <laughs> and documentary photography has been an incredibly rewarding process for me. It's probably one of my favorite things to do in all of photography other than impromptu street portraits. I follow the same strategy that I do with my uh, my portrait photography. I generally shoot wide, I usually shoot stop down, and typically with a tripod. Sometimes that shutter slap with the Mamiya 645 can be so 
violent that even hand holding at 1 60th of a second can introduce a, a little bit of a motion blur into the image. So using a tripod really, really helps eliminate that factor and gives you nice, crisp, clean images. So let's talk about the lenses that I have for this camera. I own the 55, 80, and 210 millimeter lenses all at f2.8. And I love all of them. They all have an incredible amount of character to go along with them because they are of the same series of lenses from Mamiya. We're good to go. But my favorite of those lenses being the 55. And from street portraits to landscapes to pretty much all around documentary photography, this lens pretty much stays on the body of my camera almost 90% of the time. This lens has a ton of character and character is kind of an interesting subject because since manufacturers started creating lenses in the 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to today, they've strived for perfection. And uh, I think one thing that kind of gets away is character, which helps make your images look a little bit more unique. The 55, especially in the corners, you're gonna notice these sort of swirling bokeh, what I refer to as bananas or bananarama because it has been a cruel, cruel summer. Thank you guys. I'll be here all week. That was stupid. I actually wrote that joke down too. Also, this lens works wonders with my favorite film, Kodak Ektar 100. It really makes those colors really come alive and it renders those tones with a Z. Uh, super true to life, but almost, I don't know, just a little bit more punchy, I think. I also have the 80 millimeter F2.8, which is a great lens in its own right, but one that quite frankly, I don't use that often. It does have that character that these Mamiya Secor or Secar, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but the Mamiya Secor C lenses are sort of known for. If you shoot this wide open, you will get those sort of bananas in the corners. Stop it down to F5.6, F8. It's pretty much universal with all of these types of lenses. Uh, it's super, super sharp, but uh, I really don't care to use this lens that much. And the reason is because it's kind of tight. Think of it more as like a nifty 50, your standard 55 millimeter focal length. It just doesn't really have uh, that sort of wide angle view that I like with the uh, 55 millimeter lens. And when you're shooting with an aspect ratio of six centimeters high by 4.5 centimeters wide, I think a wider lens sort of suits that format just a little bit better. I also have the 210 millimeter f2.8. It's actually f4. So <laughs> that just goes to show how little I actually shoot this lens. I've, I've only actually shot it twice and um, it just feels really impersonal. Uh, super long lenses. You have to be super far away from your subject in order to get, uh, you know, a decent composition. And in fact, the one image that I've taken with this that I really don't like is this one here of a gentleman painting over graffiti on a building about a half mile away. This just sort of illustrates my point that it is a super impersonal lens. And uh, if you were to try to shoot a portrait with this lens, you would have to stand roughly 17 feet away from your subject in order to get a decent tight headshot. And uh, again, that just feels super impersonal to me. Long lenses just don't really fit my work. I do have this lens. Jamal, the photographer who sold me the camera with these lenses did include this. Uh, which is the only reason why I own it. But um, hey, if you're looking to get super tight, this lens, like the 55 and 80 millimeter, have tons of character and uh, are super sharp. If you're new to medium format, I think this camera would fit seamlessly into your collection, especially if you're somebody who is uh, shooting 35 millimeter and looking to make that jump to medium format. This camera just fits perfectly because when it comes to aspect ratio, 35 millimeter is longer than it is tall. And the same thing goes with six by 4.5. It's 
It's a little bit longer than it is tall. So uh, if you want to sort of integrate your work through 35 millimeter and medium format, it's a really great jumping off point. And uh, the resolution or the detail that you're going to get out of these 645 images are way, way better. You're going to get a lot more detail out of these medium format images than you would with 35 millimeter. I think another thing to consider if you're jumping from 35 millimeter to medium format is the size of the cameras. Typically with 35 millimeter, you get these nice compact cameras and uh, they're very lightweight. But with 645, it's sort of this in between where you're not bogged down by just the sheer size and weight. Uh, like something if you were to shoot with uh, a Mamiya RB67 or RZ67 or even a Pentax 67. These are really big bulky cameras. I've seen people use camera straps that uh, are like car seat belts to carry these around because they're so heavy and you need uh, industrial strength material in order to uh, to keep it attached. To further illustrate that point, if you were to carry something around like a Fuji GX680, you might need a crane to help you move that around. So outside of the mechanical 645s, you know, the original, the J, the 1000S, you have two other highly successful heirs to the proverbial throne, and that is the Super and the Pro. I've only owned the Super in the past, and to be completely honest, I don't know what the difference between the Super and the Pro are other than uh, the Pro has more rounded edges and uh, the Super has more squared off edges. That's really the only thing that I can tell uh, differentiates the two, especially from appearance. Both are fully electronic and have all those bells and whistles that you would expect from a camera of the modern era. But its greatest feat is for me, I think its biggest downfall in that it is completely dependent on a battery. This little fellow. This little guy right here. These batteries are not that easy to find out in the wild. In fact, if you were to go to like a CVS or a convenience store while you're out in a shoot, you're gonna chance not finding it. You're probably not going to find it. Chance not having an extra and your day of photography is donezo, my friend. The fully electronic cameras have another mortal enemy and that is weather. Kind of a tough one because I love shooting in the rain. I love shooting in the snow. Those are two of my favorite times. And also shooting in the cold. These cameras can be extremely temperamental. And if uh, you were to ever get any of those internal electronic components, even slightly wet, a little bit of moisture in those integral parts is going to ruin this camera. A $1,500 camera becomes a $1,500 decoration and no one wants to see that. It's what really makes me long for the simplicity of mechanical cameras. For my money, it's the originals, it's the mechanicals, it's the 1000S, it's the J. It's those cameras that really, I think are worth their money or worth their weight in gold. But is it worth it for you? It's the beauty of photography. You get to decide what you shoot, how you shoot, what you shoot with. It's all subjective, baby. Oh, and one last thing, don't buy the AE Finder because uh, they don't typically fit on all of the bodies. Uh, this only goes for the mechanical versions, the 1000S, the J, the original. Mm, there was something a bit off with Mamiya when they manufactured these that they don't fit every single camera. I don't know why. For my money, it's the waist level finder. It's super easy, it's super compact. There's really nothing to it. There's no glass here. It's literally just, uh, metal that's it and uh they are more expensive even though you get less for your money but they are much more fun to use they don't break down and they fit perfectly nice as i mentioned at the top of the hour i have joined patreon and uh even though emily has been asking me to do this for about a year and a half now i finally decided to pull the trigger and create a Patreon account. And uh, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty excited about it actually. I'll be updating my patrons on upcoming videos. Uh, you guys will be entered to win exclusive giveaways. Um, and you'll also see director's commentary on some older videos and uh, some behind the scenes on newer videos. And if you jump to a higher tier, you will get a four by six print every single month that I make right here at home. So follow the link in the description below. It would mean the world to me if you guys even just went to the website. That that would make my day. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Green tarp. That is just super contrast. You're really making it pop. When I looked through the ground glass, that was the first thing I noticed. So I, I, I really want to capture that.
The mosquitoes are the biggest challenge right now though. <laughs> Get off, buddy. <laughs> How weird is that? By the way, I don't know if you guys can see, but this is that's Bret Hart on a uh, on a mountaintop uh, mountaintop lake, wearing cowboy boots. It's like my favorite shirt, and I never get to wear it. And I figured, hey, let's just have some fun today. <laughs> 